Now only recently I've started to look at Realme phones. This is now the third, the Realme X2. Now why I'm interested in them is because they are attacking head on the mid range segment, which has been dominated by these guys here. Xiaomi of course with their Redmi lineup and you can see Realme is aimed at Redmi and clearly with this phone, it is tackling and taking on head to head the Redmi Note 8 Pro that I also happen to have. I've also got a review of this in the channel, by the way. So what we've got here is a definite upgrade over the Realme 5 Pro. They swapped out the IPS panel. They put an AMOLED in here, which is a very bright AMOLED as you see in this review. They've changed the camera on the rear. So the megapixel race is on, unfortunately, thanks to Samsung and Sony with their newer high megapixel sensor. So it's a 64 megapixel sensor. We've still got the ultra wide, which is eight megapixels. 4000 milliamp hour battery and oh this screen also supports an end screen fingerprint reader so full specs of the phone are right up here followed by my time code so feel free to skip ahead to what part of this review lengthy review interests you the most now this is what we get inside the box here so we have a very quick 30 watt charger now this will fully charge the phone in under one hour and in 30 minutes you get approximately 65 percent battery that is so fast it does get warm the phone also gets warm they're really pushing the limits here the cable it's not particularly long and it does attract dirt really easy even though i've only had this phone for about four days now some trade tool and we've got a tpu case exactly like the realme 5 pro smoky gray color clear offers decent protection out of the box and does cover the buttons there is also a few quick start guides. Mine are all in Chinese because this is a imported version that I bought off AliExpress. So let's move on to the design of it. I wanted to do a very quick little comparison while comparing the builds here to the Realme 5 Pro that I just recently reviewed. So on first glance, you look at them and go, hey, they're identical, right? Well, almost. Size-wise, very similar. However, it's slimmed down quite a bit now, the Realme X2. It's seven millimeters with the camera, bump on the back that then brings it up to 8.9 so it's almost two millimeters for the camera uh, but overall build quality slightly better because we've got glass now on the back here although this one to me also feels like glass okay but it's a hardened plastic apparently but I've got the global version I have my doubts without doing a scratch test whether it is now the frame around the outside is plastic but it feels very solid and hard when you tap that it's like, hey, that feels like metal, but apparently it isn't. It's just the painted and the finish, very dense plastic. And that's why it will probably fool a lot of people there. So power button here, very easy access to that. I'll demonstrate the face unlocking. So just look at it, tap, and there we go. It is really quick. In-screen fingerprint reader now. And I find it's not as fast as the Realme 5 Pro's one. So I'll just quickly show you. It's about a second there and really not too bad at all it's about as fast as my okay under a second fast as my huawei p30 pro which is great considering that's a flagship phone so the chin at the bottom is also a little bit smaller here you can probably see but not by much it's about a millimeter or so there so the front top notch front facing camera is 32 megapixels now that is an upgrade from the 16 we have on the realme 5 pro the SIM tray is the same, so two nano SIMs and a micro SD card. I really like the fact that they are doing this Realme because you don't have to give up one of those SIM slots. Now it is metal reinforced, but it doesn't have a rubber gasket around it to stop any dust getting in or say splashes of water. So no IP rating here, of course. Now we've got an upgrade to the cameras. If you could call it an upgrade, there's not too much of a difference between them. So we've gone from 48 megapixels now f1.8 to now the 64 megapixels. This is the Samsung GW1 sensor that's in a few other phones now, uh, most notably, uh, of course, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. Now there is a slight tweak to the ultra wide camera, I believe with the lens, it's now F2.3, I believe there. And we still have the two megapixel macro and the two megapixel camera for depth information. Just like the Realme 5 Pro, we have the volume buttons in the same exact location on the left hand side. I can easily access them and no, they don't rattle, they aren't loose. So what are we missing with this phone here? What are the possible deal breakers for some people out there? So there's no IR transmitter on the top. It's just the secondary mic and there is no status LED. So if you need both of those, this phone unfortunately lacks them, which is kind of weird. 
So we have a very good upgrade here in terms of screen quality. So they've gone from an IPS panel. It was actually and still is a very nice IPS panel that they do have in the Realme 5 Pro. It doesn't suffer too much from those shadows you see and the bleeding around the notch or the bottom chin. Not really too much of an issue, but now with the AMOLED screen, we don't see any of those IPS traits there. Maximum brightness has increased a lot. We've gone from about 400 and something lux on the Realme 5 Pro to now 800 lux on the X2 here. So really bright screen, blacks are deep. It's overall an impressive screen. I believe that they're put in here considering the price of this phone. Now the gamma is a little bit off, okay? It's about, you can see right here, about 2.4. Ideally, it should be 2.2. And just like the other Realme phones that I have reviewed, you can adjust the white balance, the scaling, and the font size. And yes, it does support an always on display because it's an AMOLED screen here. Okay, so let's look at the performance now of this ROM. It is a step up, thankfully, over the Realme 5 Pro here, and it just feels so much more fluid. I'm in full screen gestures, and I haven't seen any micro starters. I was experiencing them with the Realme 5 Pro a little bit just here and there. Now, the RAM management is very aggressive, just like other phones, just to try and improve your battery life, of course. So you will see the task manager clearing things out, and when you go back to some applications, it will then just have to reload itself. So you're gonna see a bit of that. Now, all you need to do, of course, is just go here and lock to keep it in memory to stop the RAM management to just clearing that out. So we do have here an apps drawer, as you can see, and it comes with a lot of bloatware because I have the Chinese version. So the global ROM version won't have so much junk on here. So your toggles at the top, notifications are all coming through. NFC is on board here, which is great. Google Pay is working, by the way, too. And one other thing to point out is We've got a very interesting and cool setting here with the wireless that it can do this dual mode. Now, I think this is to do with the chipset support, of course, Snapdragon 730G now. So if you go into the settings of Wi-Fi, you can use the dual Wi-Fi setup. I've got it on and you'll see with my tests that it does really boost the speed. It can almost double the speed of what you would expect from a mid-range phone. So the Color OS, I don't know. I'm not really super fond of it. I noticed that there's some annoying things in there. Like, for example, you want to put apps in a folder and it ends up being a bit of game of cat and mouse to put it in. It sometimes shifts around. And now it's actually going to let me put this in here. So put that in there, working in the folder. But see what happens? <laughs> it's, this happens often. A little bit, oh, a little bit of a game. So they really need to tweak and improve that. But once you're using it after a while, you get used to it. And the main thing is the performance is good. So let's jump in now to some of my screenshots here and we'll work through this. So this is just first my 4G speeds, all dependent on your carrier. No complaints, signal strength is good and no issues. So wireless, this was tested using, okay, that dual mode. And I would normally get around 250 max speeds out of a phone like this, but look at it. This is flagship wireless performance here super quick, really good, that is impressive. And when you're using just, for example, 5G, I notice my max speed here, you can see, 243 megabits per second, so that is the difference we're looking at, okay? It's uh, almost, well, it has doubled it, hasn't it? Now, from the other side of the studio here, it just scrapes over 100 megabits per second, which passes my test. Older phones, some of the old crappy MediaTek ones, uh, they would only get 80 or below, so if it can make 100 from that range, I'm happy. So we do have UFS 2.1 storage here, even though the speeds almost look like EMMC 5.1, apparently because it's only running in single channel, so that is why. But it's still good. Random reads are fast here. Random writes, not so much, but the reads means that we're not gonna get any bottlenecks. Good performance, really. Camera API 2, level three support. So this is gonna be a good candidate. There's gonna be Google camera ports for this that's gonna work, and you can improve on your low light camera performance. So this was expected, being on, of course, the Chinese ROM, Wide Vine level, three certs. So no Netflix, no Amazon Prime in full HD, sadly. Uh, that will come with, I think, the full version, uh, sorry, the global version will, of course, later on, because the Realme 3 Pro has it. They are pushing that through, so Wide Vine level one cert, I do believe will come in the future, at least I hope so. Okay, so and 2-2 scores. Far too many people put way too much significance on this. So we get 220,000 approximately on the Realme X2. And you can see it's a step up from the Realme 5 Pro right here. 
a nice increase in the GPU performance, CPU as well is up there. And this is why I think it does feel so much smoother. So the Redmi Note 8 Pro, it has a much higher score when you look at the GPU, especially there. So in gaming, I have noticed that yes, it does seem quite a bit faster. However, interesting to note though, that the ROM performance overall, I find on the Realme X2 to be smoother. And that's probably just all down to optimization. It seems that Realme have it a lot smoother, better optimized than MIUI, but hey, that could all change with firmware updates. And lastly, GPS performance. I noticed that the Realme X2 did take a long time to get a first lock. And what I mean by a long time was about 10 seconds. But now when I use it, it's quick. It will only take a few seconds. So you get an accuracy of four meters onto audio quality. So it's pretty much exactly the same here as the Realme 5 Pro. We've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with good output. I have no complaints really with the quality of it. I don't believe it's quite as good as Xiaomi, however. Now voice calls sound good to me. And we also have active noise cancellation with the voice calls as well. Bluetooth 5 is on board, so if you have TWS earbuds, you can use those. And there is no dual loudspeaker setup on this. So the earpiece, I really wish they could have made this as well. A loudspeaker would just add a little bit more. But overall, I think the loudspeaker does sound decent. Great volume for receiving calls with your ringtones. And as you'll hear now with this Terminator 2 sample, that the speaker is loud, but it doesn't really have a lot of bass to it. But overall, I think it's good for the price of the phone. So gaming performance, this is Call of Duty, which is now everyone's replacement uh, for PUBG, basically. And you can see you get very good frame rate here. This is on the high settings with the unlimited, uh, well, the highest option for your frames per second here. And you can see very smooth, looks great. Stunning visuals with this game, by the way, if you haven't checked it out. And in fact, when you play the Battle Royale, I think it's so far actually better than PUBG. So this game's gonna run perfectly fine here on the Realme X2. Now, if a game is going to lag, it's going to be this one here. So Shadowgun Legends with the very high settings right now, 60 frames per second. I've noticed that it does dip down. You definitely notice some frame dips. And so I recommend going with just the very high setting. Sorry, just the high setting, not very high, because you will experience a little bit of lag with this one here. So not quite flagship gaming performance, although it is very good as you can see, still super playable. So now onto the cameras, this is my camera review part of my video. So this is the front camera, this is 1080p, the maximum resolution you get here. Very good quality, but we do have a bit of a crop because of the electronic image stabilization. Now a lot of other manufacturers still don't use electronic image stabilization with the front facing cameras, so the quality would be quite poor with it shaking all over the place. So it's a good step forward here from Realme doing this, and the audio quality, just like the Realme 5 Pro, is very good here as well with the front-facing camera. So with the 4K video, we get good audio, just like the front-facing camera, but we don't get any electronic image stabilization. So you really need to stand still. Probably need a gimbal as well to get really decent footage. Now the footage itself is quite sharp. It is good. I do like it. It's just that lack of stabilization. Now the focus seems to work well it can struggle i've noticed in some lighting conditions so not as good as the dual pixel phase detection autofocus we get with some sensors like the 12 megapixel sensor and the redmi note 5. now if you don't mind 1080p video we've got the ultra steady mode here which is very similar to what samsung brought in with the s10 plus i'm walking ahead and you can see this electronic image stabilization does a very good job we'll just jog a little you can see there are a few tremors go down these stairs but it's great to have this very good electronic image stabilization and i would love to see more manufacturers adding this by the way it does shoot at 60 frames per second but because this video is 4k 30 that is why you're not seeing 60 frames per second and this is a sample of 1080p footage does have electronic image stabilization which works generally well it's not the best i have seen 
So do you like my boat here, my super yacht that I just bought with all that YouTube money that I'm rolling in? Only $250 million. All right, I'll keep this a little shorter here that this is a fantastic phone and a big step up over the Realme 5 Pro in terms of screen quality. So that's the first thing you notice straight away. Very bright AMOLED screen and screen fingerprint reader. It's actually working well. It's about under, it's under a second unlocking. Face unlocking, great, it's working, but it's not that secure, it's only 2D. Step up with the front facing camera, yeah, it's not really that much better than the 16 megapixel one. I wouldn't be too bothered about that. And the 64 megapixel new sensor on the rear can take very good photos, sharp photos. When you use the 64 megapixel mode, as you saw from my sample, that you do get a lot more details. Um, a little bit of noise in there, a larger file size, of course. So some people will use that, it's fine. Portrait mode, stitching and blurred background looks good. Video quality, I like it, okay? Electronic image stabilization, front facing camera and rear in 1080p, very good. Then the ultra steady mode. That is great to have. So we're getting flagship features. Samsung has it with the S10 and the Note as well. It's coming through to these mid-range phones. This is really good to see this, okay? Brilliant. Now, 4K doesn't have electronic image stabilization, but the audio quality throughout with video is really, really good. Finally, high quality microphones and a high bit rate. So take note, Xiaomi, Xiaomi, come on. They've got to step up now because these guys, Realme, they are definitely going for them. Now their experience with their ROM performance, clearly to me from Oxygen OS, is pulling through into Color OS because it's very fluid, very fast, no micro stutters. I saw some micro stutters with my Realme 5 Pro review, just now and then, but overall it's still very quick and smooth. Chrome performance, scrolling, smooth, very smooth. I'm loving it, it's good. Uh, multitasking, great as well with the eight gigabytes of RAM as expected, it's good. Now step up in performance from the Realme 5 Pro, not a huge increase there. With gaming you notice it a little bit more. You can push the settings a little bit higher with say PUBG or Call of Duty, but overall all the games out there are all gonna be playable. But Shadowgun Legends, which is one of the most demanding for me, you still see some stutters here and there. So lower the setting to high, don't put it on ultra high, 60 frames per second. So it gets warm, but not alarmingly hot. It's actually quite cool. There is no heating issue or heating as all the Indians are going on about with the Redmi Note 8 Pro that this one, no, is fine so far. I'm not having any troubles. In fact, it gets warmer when you fast charge it. So there, form of their propriety fast charging, you have to use their cable and their charger, but it's so quick. That's when you feel the heat from the phone, there. Okay, battery life, very good. Two day mobile phone for medium use, uh, heavy use, you're still gonna make a day. Now if you're a straight out, four hours solid gaming, uh, then yeah, you're gonna burn through that battery. Four hours of solid gaming, you'll be down to 20%. You're gonna get about five hours out of it. I did notice that the standby battery drain doesn't seem to be that great. Now with the ROM, with the firmware, they can improve upon that, but I saw about 7% battery lo loss overnight and I wasn't doing anything. Of course, I just left it. Now I didn't have the always on display on, it would have been even more. It would have probably been about 10% there. So hopefully they can address that and fix that. It could have been something to do with uh, me having it left on data, 
and it just, you know, it should be a little bit better, I feel, there. So there's no IR transmitter, there's no notification LED, but I'm not going to miss the notification LED because we've got the always on display there. Our notifications, by the way, they all pull through there too. So all up, it's a good upgrade, good battery life, the screen, the build is decent. Okay, yeah, it's hardened plastic that almost feels like metal. Back of it, glass. I mean, it feels like glass to me without doing a scratch test. It does. And solid cameras, good video all around. All around, my favorite mid-range phone that I've seen right now that sells for about, what, 270, 260 US? I think that's a decent price. And really, if I was Xiaomi, I'd be stepping up my game. Definitely now that these guys are really pushing hard with the Realme X2. So I hope to see you back in the channel. I hope you, of course, like this lengthy review. If you are new around here, please do subscribe for more reviews from me. Bye for now.